Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And hey, look, you know, I just want to say first, Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed your holiday, your Christmas, um, whatever that you celebrate during the time. Um, Happy New Year. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, that you didn't get too drunk or got in trouble or whatever the situation was. Um, it is a Happy New Year, but for Cowboy fans, alike we just we're not in the playoffs so um me personally it's a weight lifted off me because i don't have to worry about our team throughout the stretch right now i can just relax and watch other teams and enjoy other teams and see how well they do things that we didn't do things um first i want to say uh 25 years if you're under 25 years old and you watch this channel, I first of all want to apologize to you because you didn't you didn't get a chance to see this team win a Super Bowl. You know, um, I've seen the games when they won the Super Bowl in the 90s and um, well, the three in the 90s that is because um, I wasn't around for 71 and 77 because <laughs> I'm an 80s baby. But you know, but again, I got to see the 90s um, games and. Those were the good times. Now, you ask, what happened to this team in the 25 years after that? You know, I talk about Jerry Jones and how he learned how to be an owner of a team from Al Davis. But one thing that he forgot to mention that or, or realize is that Al Davis was a coach. Al Davis um, knew different things than he did. So you can't follow other people's philosophies and what they do if you didn't live that person's life or understand what that person knows. You can't follow exactly what they do. You can learn from them and then find your own way of doing things. Now, Jerry Jones is just a stubborn individual. Now, we know he loves to make money. So the only way that you're going to get him to listen if you take money out of his pockets and you know, with the fan base, how you do that is you stop supporting. And when I mean stop supporting, I don't mean stop being a Cowboy fan. I mean stop going to games, stop buying tickets, stop buying merchandise, things of that nature. You got to get into his pockets. Now, if a, if enough people do that, then he'll see the numbers going down. And he's like, okay, well, I can't do this, that, and the third, and I got to figure things out. Now, I don't fault Jerry for being a passionate guy because I'm a I'm a passionate brother myself. Um, I'm a very loyal person when it comes to like my friendships and relationships that I have with people. And, you know, you value those things, you know what I mean? Especially if people have been good to you, you understand what I'm saying? So I get that Jerry Jones sees Jason Garrett as his, like a son to him. You know, Jason Garrett played on the team. He was Tory Aikman's backup during the 90s Super Bowl era. Um, you know, Garrett's dad, you know, worked with Jerry, worked under Jerry. So they're, they're familiar with each other. They, it's a, it's a lot of love there. So, you know, he loves Jason Garrett and okay, fine. That's the personal stuff, but personal and business should never mix. So if you see your fan base and you see things going on, your coach is not fitting the bill and doing this, that, and the third, I understand that you respect Garrett. Now I will say some positive about Garrett, 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 speaks a good philosophy. He's a good person. I like J Jason Garrett as a person, but I don't like him as a coach of the Dallas Cowboys because again, he's like Jerry. He's got these stubborn ways and he wants to do it one way and one way only. When you coach anything, any competitive sport, doesn't matter, football or not, when you're coaching a professional sport, you have to be open for change. You have to be open to make adjustments because if you don't do these things, you're going to keep running your head into a wall in that proverbial wall. And at the end of the day, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to win any championships. You're not going to go any playoffs and you're just going to be a lame duck. And we all know, we all see Jason Garrett as a, as a, um, a, uh, a lame duck. Now the players respect him. Well, you know, his his words and verbiage are, are are dead, but they respect him enough because of the things that he's done for individual players. That is the the person, Jason Gear. He is a good guy, but that doesn't translate to being a good coach, unfortunately. So because there's a there's a um 
there's a separation there. Jerry doesn't understand that the dynamics, just because you see this guy as a good guy, doesn't mean that he's great to coach your football team. Now, it would make sense to me if I'm Jerry Jones, which is 77 years old, and the window is closing on your life, sir. Some of us aren't even blessed to see 77 years old. So at that age, you should be like, okay, the window is closing for me, not my team per se, but the window is closing for me as an owner of this team to try to make things better and make changes. So to make a change and to be the one to want to make a change, you have to sit here and tell yourself, okay, do I want to sit here in mediocrity all day for for the for 25 years and be the laughing stock of the league because the brand of the Dallas Cowboys and the fact that you're um a billion dollar industry or, or franchise, I should say, and you're not winning, that doesn't make sense. Billion dollar franchises are successful. We are not successful. Jerry is successful with his money, but his team is not. You have the second best roster in the NFL this season. Or should I say had because the season is over. Um You have to be able to win with your talent. Do you know how many coaches from other teams and just franchises in general look at the Cowboys and be like, damn, I wish I had that roster. Damn, I wish I had those guys. You could probably name 25 players of the 53 on this team. If they were released today, they would have a job tomorrow. That's how good these players are. And I'm and I'm saying 25 of those players to be generous. I want to say that maybe 35 of our players are good enough to get a job tomorrow. But because you have a team that's talented and you end the season 8 and 8, 8 and 8, help me understand that because none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. So all you guys that come and talk about, oh, player execution this, player execution that, I know about all that. I get that. But when your players start losing, they tend to not execute. When they keep hearing the same thing over and over again, it gets stale. Dallas Cowboys is not an old team anymore when Tony Roman was here. This is a young team. Your quarterback is young. Your running back is young. Your tight ends outside of Jason Witten are young. Your linebackers outside of Sean Lee are young. Your defensive line as a whole is young. So when you have a group of young players, right? And, and when I mean young, I mean 26, 25, 26 and younger. And, you know, when, think about what you were doing in your 20s. Just because these guys make millions of dollars don't mean that they still don't want to do young people's stuff because this is what they do. You remember that incident when um when Dak Prescott and uh, Ezekiel Elliott got was on TMZ because they were playing a prank on something and they were and they bought penis shaped water guns. This is what you do when you're young. It's funny, ha <laughs> ha But me in my thirties, I'm over that at this point. But when I was in my twenties, I probably would have done some dumb stuff like that too because it's fun. It's 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 what you do. It's <laughs> They're not hurting nobody. You know what I'm saying? That's good, healthy fun that they were doing as a kid. Now, when you get older, your mindset changes. So, but you don't have that at that age. You still need guidance. And guidance in football is coaching. The guidance comes from your coaches, your coordinators, your assistant coaches, whatever the situation may be. It has to come from the brass. The brass has to Give these guys the discipline. They need. This is the biggest thing about Dallas Cowboys. They lack discipline. You look at an organization like the Patriots. They are forever at a situation where it's like the players know what's going on. Hell, Belichick, now I don't necessarily agree with that, but Belichick doesn't allow them to do any commercials, any endorsements, anything outside of football during the football season. They're, they're almost like robots over there. They know... Coming into the door, when you get signed to the Patriots, you know from Jump Street, hey, this is what our coaching staff and our owner expects from you. If you don't abide by that, you're out of here. Look at Michael Bennett. That's how we got him because he he wasn't 
a Patriot guy. He didn't do it the Patriot way. Now, I'm not saying the Patriot way is right because they cheat too. But I'm just saying they have discipline on their team that the Cowboys do not have. This is the reason why they win consistently. When you have the discipline there and things are set straight and your coaches are in these players' ass and letting them know what's going on, that, hey, this is how you need to act when you're on this team. None of that foolishness. When it, when you're not playing football, you can be 20, whatever, and do what you want. But when you're playing football, when you're in team atmosphere, when you're a part of that brand and you're representing that brand, you have to um, act accordingly. Now, we lack that with the Dallas Cowboys. You lack upper level leadership because those so called leaders that are that are um, the brass are too soft to tell these players what it is. Now, they try to get all big and buff when they um, cut Des Bryant and try to make an example. Look, all that did was just show favoritism to certain things. Now, I'm not going to get into that part right now. I'll, do, I'll save that for my live stream later in the week. Uh, but when you talk about the dynamic of the Dallas Cowboys and what the Cowboys mean, the reason why they're America's team. This group of players right now are not representing the star like it should be. So when a new coach comes into this, this team, now we talk about Jason Garrett, right? Um, and I just want to clarify something real quick. Stop. I don't want to hear nobody saying, when is he going to get fired? When is he going to get fired? Why is he not fired yet? I, I'm tired of this. So, again, we're all tired. But for the last three days, he's met with the team. Now, I explained to you probably and most likely what went on behind those closed doors. And I'm using com complete common sense when I say this. Um, Jason Garrett's not going to get fired. Okay? You don't necessarily fire somebody when their contract is up. You know what happens? The day that their contract is up, they just walk out the door. They pack their things and they go. Doesn't mean that you were fired. You just weren't re-signed. So I don't think the Cowboys are going to, quote unquote, fire Jason Garrett. His contract is up, so he will leave. Now, unless they come back and do some crazy stuff and re-sign him, which I doubt. That'd be stupid. Um, He's done. So next week, uh, what is it, the 15th, 16th, whatever the date is when his contract is up next week, that is when Jason Garrett will be officially gone. So I'm telling you right now, if you watch my channel, you've seen, if you hear what I'm saying right now, stop saying, is he going to get fired? He is not going to get fired, more than likely. It's just going to be a situation where they will let his contract run out and go. This is the reason why I think that, because Jason Garrett is respected by Jason, Gar by Jerry and them. He's well, he's respect. They respect him. They love him. So they're not going to just fire him. They're going to let him go gracefully. That is the respect that they're giving Jason Garrett. Now, does he deserve that? Hmm. Some people say yes. Some people say no. And I know some people are like, well, he didn't do that to Jimmy Johnson, or he didn't do that to Tom Landry, or he didn't do that to Dave Campo, or he didn't do that to uh, Bill Parcells. Okay. That's because his relationship with them were not the same as what it is with Jer uh, Jason Garrett. Now, you could say that that's BS, and I hear you. Not denying that. But what I am saying that that is the reason why this situation is happening. To clarify that. So hear me when I tell you this. That is the situation. More than likely, nine times out of ten, he will not be fired. I'm going to say this one more time. He will not be fired. Nine times out of ten. When his contract gets done next week, he will just go off into the woods. He will just be like the Avengers movie where they just dissipated. And he'll be gone. So, with that being said, what will the Cowboys do when he is finally not on this team anymore? Those of you who have been in my chat box, appreciate you guys um, telling me what coach did you want on this team. Everybody has been asking me, E2, E2, uh, what coach do you want? Hmm. It's a good question. I'll tell you what I want. Okay. I want a coach, and I'm not going to say any names because, again, when you say these names, it's almost like you're picking them off of popularity and because of, you know, 
their merits and things of that nature. I get it. But I just want, I don't care. I just want a coach that's going to come in here, right? That's going to stand up to Jerry and say, look here, brother. I know this is your team, but if you really want me as the coach of this team, I'm going to give him an ultimatum, and I'm going to see what Jerry, I'm going to challenge Jerry. You got to challenge Jerry, because if you challenge Jerry and you come to him with a spreadsheet and you show him numbers, Jerry going to listen, because Jerry's about his money. Think about it, guys. He's about his money. So if it were me applying for this coaching position and interviewing with him, because I'm a smart brother, what I would say is this. I will walk up in there and be like, look, all, all due respect, Jerry Jones, this is your team. But you have not made it to the tournament in 25 years. You ain't made it to the NFC title game in 23. So with that being said, you've had your coach here for 10 seasons now. Hold on, let me look at the numbers. Yeah. So, and in those seasons, Jason Garrett, his regular season record is 85 and 67, which not too, too bad, but you still can do better than that with the rosters that we've had since Tony Romo till now. And but here's the stickler. Jer- Jason Garrett has only been two of two out of three in the playoffs. No NFC championship games. Just mediocrity. Four of those, I guess, nine seasons or whatever. Um, but because he was the 10th season, he was um, interim. So he was halfway through. You know what I mean? So in the time that he was the head coach, four of those seasons, four of those seasons were 500, including this year. He had a 12 and 12 record, 12 and 4 record in 2014, I believe. Yeah, 12 14 record in 2014. And that was when we went to the playoffs. And I think that was the Des Bryant catch year, I think. I could be wrong. Because I don't, all of the, the years run together. Because we had a lot of 8 and 8 years, let's be honest with you. So <laughs> the shit just run together for me. Because when I hear Jason Garrett, it just sounds, everything sounds the same. So it's kind of hard to keep track of the years when you got a coach that it sounds like everything is the same. Everything is the same. Switch it up. That's that's the problem with the Dallas Cowboys. We don't switch we don't switch things up. So um there's that, right? So the new coach comes in here, and he's like, okay, well, after knowing that and, and telling you what Garrett's record is of mediocrity, and you're gonna come here and 19, and my man 1980 said it, shout out to 1980, said it beautifully. You come in there and you're going to tell Jerry Jones what you expect. If he doesn't accept that, then, oh, well, figure it out. Find a, find another lame duck coach that's going to get you another 8-8 eight and eight season. Because what I'm afraid of is if we get a new coach and it don't work out. Because I don't trust Jerry to make the right decision to step down and allow his coach to be a coach. Because if you bring a real coach in here, I don't care what these names that y'all pull out, Lincoln Riley, Matt Rule, um, 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 uh, Urban Meyer, whatever, uh, whatever, whoever you get in here, whoever you want, that coach has to be able to stand up to Jerry and say, this is what I, I, I want to do. And if you want to start winning games, this is the best option that I could come up with right now. I like Dak Prescott. And this is the, the new coach saying, I've, I've done my recharge with Dak Prescott. He's a young, coachable quarterback, and I think I could do something with him. Because any coach who come in here and see this roster will salivate because the players are there. All you have to do is implement a good game plan. With this talent on this team and a good play, um, you mix in the ingredients and you put good scheming and good coaching. Oh, that's 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 the recipe for success right there. I always said that we were one good coach away from being Super Bowl champions. You could have turned this because there's no reason why this roster should be eight and eight. It's just you just need to bring a little bit of discipline to come in here and do the right things as a coach. And now another question is, if this said coach comes in, how is the staff going to change? And we haven't heard anything about staff being resigned or anything like that we know the chris Rashard interview with the giants but i already know that's a part of the rooney rule you know he was a token they don't really want him they just used him because they knew that they had to interview a black guy so let's let's i'm i'm keeping it a buck keeping it 100 
That that's what the situation is. They have, you know, the New York Giants have have have. They have no thought in their mind that they want um, Chris Richard as their coach. So that part I wasn't worried about. Now, almost like they use him as a scapegoat, but whatever the situation. So whatever floats your boat. But as far as this coaching staff goes, we don't know who's going to stay. Are they going to keep the running backs coach, Gary Brown? Are they going to keep Sanjay Law? Are they going to keep uh, Nussmeyer, the tight ends coach? Are they going to keep Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator and Mark Colombo since he just got the job as the offensive line coach? So what are you going to do? I like Mark Colombo. I like Kellen Moore as well. But I think that Kellen Moore's success was halted by Jason Garrett. So if you get a coach in here that comes in here that knows how to work with Kellen Moore, because I think that Kellen Moore is good with Dak Prescott because they're both young. They get it. They can do some of those little slick plays and things like that. Just easy stuff that will work. It ain't got to be all intricate and different. Just do it the right way. Do what makes sense. You know Dak Prescott is good in the re-option. You know that he runs a lot of shotgun. These are things that he did when he was in college. I know Mark Holmes said that he does. he's leery about getting a, 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 a collegiate coach. But I disagree with that because I think that a college-level coach that is a proven winner, let's be clear, um, can come in here and would love to have Dak Prescott because we've seen what Dak Prescott did at Mississippi State. You got a guy that got legs and an arm. You need to utilize both. You see what the Ravens doing with Lamar Jackson. Now, I don't agree that they run him that much, but, you know, while he's young in his season, why not? In his career, why not? But in a couple of years, he ain't going to be able to do all that. So you're going to have to be able to throw from the pocket. But Dak Prescott can throw the deep, ball deep. We've seen him. He was one goddamn yard away from beating Tony Romo's record in a season. So you have all these things that happen in the season. You had two wide receivers um, that hit a thousand. When was the last time that happened? I think that was like Dez and uh, Miles Austin was the last time we had two thousand yard wide receivers. But they quietly got their yards. Amari Cooper even injured still was making plays. So, and I think they need to bring back Randall Cobb, and I'll talk about that in a second. Now, I just I just feel like things that the dynamic of this and things need to change. Okay. So if you bring a new coach in here, and I'll talk more about that later. I'm running out of time right now. I don't want to be too, too long in this video, but I appreciate you guys here if you're if you're listening this long. I just had this on my chest, and I had to get it out. Now, that's the dynamic when you get a new coach. You're going to have to bring – I don't care. I need a guy that's going to come here, whoever he is. I need this this coach to come in here to bring the discipline to this team to, to where these players can understand it and listen and believe and buy into it. They already got team chemistry with each other. These players love each other. Um, you got a you got a good little quarterback right here that that can be something in the future. He's not there now, but the things that is wrong with him are very coachable and can fix easily. That's why I think Kitna needs to stay. That's why I think Keller Moore needs to stay. That's why I think that um, Mark Colombo needs to stay. You can get rid of anybody else on that on that offensive side staff. But those guys got to stay. Special teams coordinator Keith O'Quinn, he can go to. Um, oh yeah, and I want and I want uh, the running back coach to stay too because he loves these running backs. And I hear on the mic up when he be talking to these guys, he is passionate about his running backs. So um, I would keep Gary Brown. Also too on the defensive side, let's not forget the defense because they 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 haven't been holding up the end of the deal either. These hot boys are lukewarm, and the 49ers that took your name from you and just punked you, and y'all ain't do nothing about it. Come on, y'all. I'm need y'all to have a little bit of heart. So some of these players got to step up and have a little bit of heart. Also, too, um, there's no reason why how you got all that talent on defense. You got three dynamic uh, edge, uh, just rushers in general with with, with Michael Bennett and and um, Robert Quinn and D. Law. Those three guys themselves are great. And then you add in the sprinkling the other guys too. So a lot of you guys that talked all that crap about Tyron Crawford and how he wasn't good for this team, you really felt the pain of him not being there on that team. Because when he was in the game, a lot of that stuff was not happening. These teams were not um, just running running us down like that when, when Crawford was in the game. So he did a lot. That's why I said people didn't understand what he did because he did a lot of dirty work. Now you had to leave that to Covington, 
Christian Covington and Malik Collins and and um, Antoine Woods. They were good at it sometimes. Other games, it just it did it didn't seem like it clicked the same. So the Cowboys right now are inconsistently consistent. They're consistently inconsistent. You don't want to be that. You want to be consistently consistent. That is the goal. So with that said. I'm going to go into my last topic of the discussion. It's the players. So there are 30, I think 30 plus players, 30, 30 something players. Let's just say 30. There's 30 players right now that could not be on this team next year if they don't get re-signed back. Now, I know a couple of these on here, we already know they're going to get signed back. We're just waiting for the, the league year to finish so they can, you know, sign their guys and do what they need to do. Now, the Cowboys did make moves. They did sign some of their future guys, but you can do that, like the practice squad guys and the guys that you want to come back for training camp next year. Now, I'm going to go over the list of unrestricted guys right now. So let's start off with the head. So you got Dak Prescott. He's His contract is up, only made $2 million this season, and he is looking to get a bigger contract. Now, how much? We don't know. Um, Tavon Austin, I'm pretty sure they may or may not bring him back, um, but his contract is up. He's an unrestricted guy as well. So all these guys I'm naming right now are unrestricted. Um, Dak Prescott, Tavon Austin, um, his, his time is probably up because they don't use him that much anyway. I like Tavon Austin, but the team don't know how to use him, and that's a problem for me. Randall Cobb, I already said this before. His contract was five mil. I think he needs to come back Um Maybe give him a two two year contract, three year deal, whatever. How much time he thinks he wants to still be in the league? Give him that, um, because he's a good slot player, and we got a lot of good marks from him. You know, with yards after catch. So I want Randall Cobb in that slot because we are dangerous there now with him. With Cole Beasley, it was just a different dynamic. He caught the ball a lot, but it didn't net yards like how the guy we have now. Um, <clears throat> Amari Cooper. So. Three year, there's three year wide receivers right there. Um, Amari Cooper, we know that you know coming from the Raiders, he had that contract to carry it over. He was already making thirteen point one mil anyway, so I think that um, at the end of this year, um, they'll just scale back what they're doing and just have a real conversation and be like, okay, this is what I expect to get paid, things of that nature. Because I don't know if um, Amari Cooper is even banging with his with his uh, agent anymore because his agent changed companies. So that's that. Now, you got Jason Witten. Now, Jason Witten said that he more than likely will retire, but we don't know. He can still come back knowing him. Um, defensive end Robert Quinn. I want to see Robert Quinn come back. I want to see Robert Quinn. He had, what, 10 and a half sacks? Bring his ass back because I think that you can get him on the humble because Robert Quinn ain't looking for the money like that. You know what I mean? He 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 He's loyal to teams that he's on. So because of knowing that and knowing how he is with – you know, um, the other players on that defense and how he jokes and has fun with them. Even Michael Bennett is comfortable with these guys. So, but you look at Robert Quinn and you're like, okay, <sighs> he did this, that, and the third. Um, he fulfilled whatever that, that he fulfilled what they needed him to fulfill. He got his bonus money and everything. So with that being said, they can get him back on a small contract because I really doubt that he's really in this to make the most money because he's been in the league, what, nine years? So he's made the majority of his money. Just give him a contract that makes sense, maybe a two-year deal. Um, smaller base, but incentive. Incentive laid in that joint because his last contract from this past season, he was um, given something. So, again, <laughs> these are things you got to do. It only makes sense to me, that is. Linebacker Ray Ray Armstrong. And I know some of you guys, who the hell is Ray Ray Armstrong? He was on, he just got signed a team last week. He was there for linebacker depth. Uh Sean Lee, of course, another one like Jason Witten, expected to retire, but he could make a comeback. He actually stayed healthy all season. Even though he didn't play all the games, that's the role that you have to play Sean Lee at. Limited. Play him mainly more so in the in the big games than in the smaller games. Um, Justin March, uh, his contract is up too. And another linebacker, Michael Smith, we just got him. That was the guy that won the Super Bowl with the Seahawks. I want him back too. Cause I think that he could be really dynamic, especially if they keep Chris Richard. Um, my frat brother, Kayvon Frazier. Um, I don't know if they'll keep him or not, but he's a, he was a special team guy. 
Um, Darian Thompson, he did pretty good this year. They might could bring him back, and I think he still has practice squad eligibility as well. Um, I got to look that up, though. Kai Forbath, you definitely got to bring him back. He In the three games that he played with the Cowboys, he's been perfect. Didn't miss a kick or extra point. Um, we know that he will eventually, but, you know, it happens. But uh, he's been consistent much more than what Maher was. Uh, LP Lattisor. Uh You got to bring him back because it's LP. He can play to 60. He hasn't missed a, um, a long snap. In his, what, 17-year career. Joe Looney, center guard. I love him as a backup. I love him as a person. I just love everything about Joe Looney. I think, you know, Joe Looney could actually, because he played with Charlie Frederick, had his illness last year, I, I think that Joe Looney could go to another team and get paid the big bucks. But no, know, knowing Joe Looney and knowing how much he loves his teammates and how much he loves this brand in the Dallas Cowboys... He'll come back on a he'll come back on a smaller contract just to be here because he knows he's comfortable here and he knows everything about it. So I think that Joe Looney will get resigned because of the reason that he'll take a smaller contract. Um Xavier, not X Xavier, because remember, it, it's spelled different. So it's Xavier. Xavier Suafilo. Um Xavier Suafilo, they can let him go because he's he plays better. Um He's better in um, run coverage than he is pass coverage, so um, they can they can replace him. Even though I do like him, but they can replace him. Defensive tackle Malik Collins. He's had a lot of injuries. They might let him go. Um, may let him test the market, see what happens. Um, Christian Covington. They just got him from the Texans. They might sign him back for a cheap deal because he's one of those secondary type of guys when it comes to like like backups and stuff like that. So they might could get him on a humble. Uh, defensive lineman, Kerry Hyder, same thing. They got him from the Lions. They could probably get him on a cheap contract. Uh, linebacker, Joe Thomas. Mm, that's up in the air as well. Uh, cornerback and your cornerbacks, you're going to lose a lot of cornerbacks. So you got to figure out what you're going to do. You're going to have to sign back some of these guys. So Anthony Brown's contract is up. C.J. Goodwin's contract is up. He's a special team ace. He's a gunner. Um, he could he could be on a really small contract, a veteran minimal. Um, and Jeff Heath, you gotta you gotta bring Jeff Heath back because whether he starts or not, he has done some great things for this team. And he was an undrafted yeah. player that just stood the test of time. This guy played this season with two separated damn shoulders and was out there still tackling with a shoulder. So that the dude is a warrior. You can think you can say what you want about Jeff Heath, but but he he got a heart of gold, and I want a guy like that on my team. Period. Um, we have one free agent, which means that they can sign to somebody right now if they want to because of the way his contract is. Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett got two options. Well, three. Michael Bennett could retire because he mulled that a little bit. He may just retire. Or Michael Bennett could be like, you know what? I started something with the Dallas Cowboys, and I see I, I like my new teammates. Maybe if, see if the Cowboys can – Resign me or whatever and, and get a small contract, another one-year deal, and see what we could do next year. Who knows? I don't know where his head is. Or maybe he could go get signed by another team because he's a guy that's in his 30s and he's just looking to either play or not. Uh, restricted free agents. Um, quarterback, backup quarterback, Cooper Rush. Now, if you want to resign him, I don't know. Some people would be like, no, we'll see what's out there. Uh, tight end Blake Jarwin, you gotta you gotta bring Jake Jake uh, Blake Jarwin back. If if Jason Witten is not here, he is your starting tight end, and then you could draft another one because you still got Dalton Schultz as well. Um, restricted free agent Daniel Ross, uh, I think Daniel Ross, I think they already signed him back as a futures guy, so I think Daniel Ross is already resigned. Um, now you have your exclusive rights players, which means that they're exclusive to the team. So the team has first dibs on making a choice. They can't, they're not a free agent, meaning they can't sign with nobody else. Dallas Cowboys have to make a move on them first before another team can take a crack at them. So these are the exclusive rights players. Offensive lineman, um, Adam Redman, defensive tackle, Antoine Woods. And the club options are fullback, Jameez Olawale and, and, um, and Cameron Fleming, which I know that Jameez Olawale is going to keep his option because he, he was on a three-year contract. So 
But those are the guys. That's like, shit, damn near half your roster right there. So let me know what you guys think about that, about this team, about the coaching and everything that I said. Um, I know the video was long, but I had to, you know, I had to get these in. So with that being said, it's your boy E2Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon. Have a great day.